Welcome to the Man the Fuck Up podcast with Kimmy B I don't, you and Lenny. You say my name. Do I ever say your name? What do you mean? I don't introduce you. Oh, don't, I thought you did. Don't man mantraduce me. You need to teach me. He just mantraduced me. Teach me, Kimmy. He said my name for me, people. He mantraduced me. <laughs> Mansplaining, mantraduction. <laughs> <laughs> yes, as Lenny pointed out, I'm Kimmy V. <laughs> you could, I don't even know what the f- the term would be for explaining something to me, but you see, you have to explain some stuff to me. Well, I clearly don't explain. understand. When a woman explains something, it's simply explaining. Mm-hmm. I don't have a special voice. Clearly. I don't have a special voice like Lenny has. I don't like, know what you're talking about. Would you like <laughs> to give everybody your version of mansplaining, Lenny? <laughs> But well, that's my that's only when I'm mansplaining to my wife. Oh, okay. <laughs> when I'm mansplaining to you, it's much different. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. I think no. ma- I think Lenny's mansplaining is just mansplaining across the board. No, right. I don't think so. Listen. You are putting off what has to get done. You came into today's podcast with some things to get off of your chest. Yes. I did. It has to do with pedophilia. Yes, it does. Now, I don't see us disagreeing on too much on this topic, but I mean, no, go it's ahead and give it a go if you'd like to. Well, it's it's, you know, the whole canceling of the word pedophilia, which I think is hilarious in general that someone would even think about canceling the stigmatism of being a pedophile. Yeah. If, you know, I think it's, we should give a little backstory on this. Because for some people, they may not know Correct. that anybody was crazy enough to try to actually yeah. cancel the word pedophilia to make it, like you just said, less stigmatizing on pedophiles. Uh, yes. Or the Catholic Church, whichever comes from. Really? I'm sorry. <laughs> Lenny said that. <laughs> not me. I want no problem. With that. <laughs> right, buddy. Oh, it, sorry. So there was a professor in Virginia um, <laughs> that was teaching a course and basically alluded to the fact that we should no longer use the term pedophile to describe pedophiles. Yes. Because it's stigmatizing. And according to this professor, it's an unfair, negative stigmatization of somebody because you cannot control who you are attracted to. And the most important thing is not the fact that these people are attracted to children. That's not where they're wrong. Is basically what the person is saying. That's not that's not the quote unquote question part about this. Mm. It's if they act on it. So this professor wanted to call them. What was it? People, minor attracted person. Person, a minor attracted person. This professor wanted to use the term minor attracted persons. Instead of pedophile. Not really working for me. Lenny. I think that's a little, you know, it, it's just it's just not right. And this is probably where I'm going to lose you in this conversation, okay, Kimmy. I agree with you 2,000%. On this, and I know you do, and I think yeah. probably the rest of the entire country would believe it. Yeah. Except for the pedophiles, they're all they're, they're, they're all cheering. They are. <laughs> hey, take me off that list too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I could live in the right neighborhood now. <laughs> okay, so how am I gonna lose you, Len? I think you're gonna lose me because I think this goes back to my whole point of things are getting out of hand with canceling crisscross applesauce sitting Indian style. It's the mm-hmm. same. It's people are taking this to an extreme, and they're getting a voice. This one nutty professor, and we'll call her the nutty professor. Well, they're transgender, and their pronouns are they, them. Well, I, I wasn't even going there. I didn't even, we didn't even mention she their. Said, we'll call her nutty professor. Oh, I just happened to say sorry. That. We'll call them the nutty I, professor. I'll call her whatever I want, because this is a free country. Okay. But we'll call anyways, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll lean on the, mm-hmm. <laughs> the amendment that allows us to call anybody whatever we want. You can choose that now. <laughs> okay, you can correct me. I'm good. That's yeah. good. But go ahead. So the nutty professor is brought 
this to the attention of millions of people by spewing it out there and has caused you know an uproar in a lot of communities and I think this is one of those subjects where a lot of people can find that middle ground, <laughs> to tell you the truth, because there's no left and right on this subject. Mm -hmm. This is a clear subject. If someone touches my kids inappropriately, I'm going to fuck them up, period. So there's no, there's no left and right on yeah, this. Right I think any that. left and right would say that. But the fact that this can go on and people take it seriously is because of what's going on yeah. in general with with the allowance of everything that my generation and the generation after me has ever been accustomed to. And it's being done in a way that's not that I don't feel is correct. OK, I think if you want to change this country, you got to start and the, and the minds of the people in this country and how they think and how they speak to other people. It has to be done very early on it has to be done with parenting it has to be done with early education and everybody's got to be on the same page with it yeah i have so many questions just regarding this entire conversation because i don't think that what this professor said would have gotten attention without somebody with completely opposing views going this person is a total nut you understand what i'm saying like absolutely said in a classroom at old Domin dominion universe where mm -hmm. who huh like it wasn't like it was said on a massive news program or in mainstream media right somebody got a hold of it in the space of social media and ran with it dragged i mean dragged this professor to filth dragged them to filth and rightfully so but it's kind of like, you know, we talk about giving people a platform and sometimes we as the dissenters en enlarge the platform of course. by drawing attention to the ridiculous things we see, right? So Absolutely. to your point, I think that there's, you know, there's, a, I guess, a little give and take, right, to some degree in the sense of we, we're all a little bit to blame when the craziness gets out there and takes over because we're so mind blown at the fact that this person is this much of a moron that that we have to then take to our own social media platforms and give it even more life by talking about it. Correct. And it's, you know, a big part of this whole screaming out there because, you know, I'm big fan of being able to mm -hmm. speak your mind and freedom of speech yeah. and all that fun stuff but it it's it's being taken from us you know you ever you ever have a conversation with somebody and you tell them one thing you see your friend and you tell them this story and then three weeks later you see another one of your friends and the story comes back to you and it's like telephone yeah it's like, totally opposite what? it's what what are, what are you talking about i never said that because it went through this person who then fed it to another person who then fed it to another person who then got it back to you. And it's clearly not what you said in the first place. So that's what's happening with social media also is they're putting it out there to people and they're running it through filters of other people. And other people constantly change a word, a punctuation, something in that story that changes the story entirely. It's the same thing with mainstream media. It changes the narrative. Mm -hmm. So this girl's story got out there on uh, TikTok, I think, or wherever it got out, and people ran with it. And this particular story is not one that's going to have too many. Well, no. The, I mean, the professor is stepping down. Yeah. They've, they, they have no option. They're well, they're taking a leave of absence until their actual contract is up in 2022 spring. And then, obviously, they will not, <laughs> I'm sure, be re-signed. But I get your point in this, but I really, like, I need to go back because you know me. Like, I'm on the other side of some of this stuff for me. Like, I'm okay with using pronouns. If somebody has a preferred pronoun, it's in my bio, her, hers. Like, like that is what I identify as. Like, and I'm okay with people who would like for us to acknowledge, you know, identity. Like, I'm okay with that. I'm not going to put, like, I know you have more of an issue with that. No, I, it's, I'm it. okay. I'm okay, okay with that, that. But, but you why really did just say it? I'm okay, okay with what you teach. can call yourself whatever you want, but don't force me and teach me and expect the rest of the country to call you what you want. 
It's you. It's your choice. You want to be called him, her, them, they. It doesn't matter. What do you mean it doesn't matter? It doesn't matter. Out of respect for you as an individual, why shouldn't I honor your wishes? But, (laughs) Kimmy, because then you're creating 330 million people with different opinions that all want to be called something different. That's how life is. We all have different opinions, and we all walk through life this way. But that's like me all of a sudden deciding, well, I understand that you identify as he, but I'm going to call you her. I'm going to call you she. You probably but I call you by your name. That. No, but no, but I'm just saying. What would that be today? If I wanted to Alan, call you, Ellen. Sure, but if I wanted to call you she, like I get that you would like to be referenced as he, but I would prefer to call you she. So my you point. Call is me whatever you want. I will. That's free for you to do. You yeah. can call me she. Yeah. I won't bother me. It won't bother me in the slightest. So if I call you, if you she, refer to me as phone she phone. on this on this podcast, it won't bother me in the slightest. Do you know why? Because I pee standing up. I know who I am, okay? I know what I am. It doesn't matter what you say to me, Kimmy. That's not going to change how I feel. But does it really take that much energy for somebody to respect another human being? Do we really need more confusion in this country? Do we need more confusion in this country? Are you serious? If you can't, if it it that difficult, if, if you're telling me that that is... The largest, like that. Are you going to tell me we need to teach our kids there's 186 genders? There aren't 186. Well, whatever they claim there is, however many there is. I don't think it's anywhere near 186. It's something like that. Look it up. Google it. I'm okay. You'd be surprised. It's it's some ridiculous amount. If somebody asks you to call them, it's like it's like walking through life and somebody constantly mispronounces your name, right? It's I can fine. ask you a few times it's, to, to get it so, right. And All right. It's just give me, give me a for instance when, when someone might ask me to call them something. We go to that party. If you have somebody who is transgender, Lenny, I think that it would be very difficult for you, looking at somebody who was born female and now presents as male. You would like you're doing it to this professor. You're calling them her, because when you look, you know, you're like, I think that they're transgender. But yeah, well, I mind, mean, maybe it's my generation. Yeah. You know, if it walks As like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. You know, I mean, it's it's my generation. That's what we were raised on. So why why the confusion? Listen, it, give me a for instance where I would offend somebody. You know, I mean, I live in South Florida, but there's transgendered people. There's cross dressers. There's pedophiles. There's every type of person. <laughs> When I meet, I, I, I'm sorry, there's there's heterosexuals too, there's, you know, whatever there is, there's people. Yep. So every time I murder, meet a person, do I have to, like, automatically, like, if I saw you, I would think you're a woman. It's just, that's clearly what you're putting out there. Maybe I just choose to present as a woman. And that's great for you, but you look like a good-looking woman. So, you know, if a Ferrari pulls up, I'm not going to say, nice Ford, dude. My car identifies as a Ford, not a Ferrari. It's If you're going to put it out there, if you're going to put it out there, if you're going to put it out there, and you're going to walk around looking like this, I'm going to say, you know, if I said to a transgender woman, hey, you're a good-looking girl. Is that going to offend her because I'm calling her a girl, but she's really a man? No, no. I'm sure she'd be very happy about that. Uh, she's presenting maybe. as a female. She'd be thrilled. My point was not to get into the whole pronoun conversation with you. My point was in talking about this particular person. It's so mind-blowing to me that literally as a professor of higher education, they are choosing to utilize their platform to promote something that shouldn't be promoted like i don't know a world in which it's okay so to here's be attracted here's my thought to, on like, it to be attracted to children here's here's my thought on it yeah this is someone who personally mm-hmm. might have some issues yeah. with their how they feel about their role in society mm-hmm. and brought this issue out to reflect more light on that. Well, I mean, they they wrote a book. You know, it's like one of those called "A Long Hold on a Long Dark Shadow." Minor attracted people and their pursuit of dignity. Like this professor is really trying to make this a thing, and their pursuit of dignity. How about this? Act dignified, and don't mess with kids. Like I don't like to me. I this this one is just so far out of the realm of. 
actuality of something that I anybody can get behind like I don't get this and then for you to sit I don't know it just it's it's wild to me I'm glad that the kooky pants that you watched on TikTok dragged this person to filth because at the end of the day if you have to say it's never ever okay to commit child abuse right child sex abuse However, having sexual urges towards children isn't necessarily wrong as long as those carnal desires aren't acted upon. That's literally a walking contradiction. To tell somebody how you feel is not wrong and then to say, but don't act on that because then clearly how you feel is wrong. If you can't act on what you want, then it's wrong. It's like if you know you're married, right? and you desire to cheat, right? You don't do it because you know it's wrong, right? Like that's that's the theory there. Yes. Right, if you think about it, like, okay, or I mean, right. you can walk into a store and really wanna steal something, but you don't do it because you know it's wrong. So how do you- And Popo's gonna get you. That this doesn't have anything to do with morality. How do you say that being attracted to children has nothing to do with This has morality? to do with the confusion over right and wrong in this country. It's crazy. <laughs> it, has it, to, it has to do with the confusion over right and wrong in this country. And there's a lot of that. There's a lot of that. If there is a gray area, it's getting exploited. Mm -hmm. Okay? And it's getting taken to the extreme. And this is, this is, this is, is this an extreme. Really the battle that this person wants to fight, is this really the battle? You know, there's Nutty professor that you want to choose to fight <laughs> as a transgender individual. There are much more dignified causes for you to be putting your efforts, education, and intellect behind. This is not it. No, this is not it at all. And it's. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like as a. I get it. I get it. I get it. I'm a parent. I understand this. You know, and it's. It's difficult. Other countries have different thoughts on this. I mean, my mom got married when she was 15 years old. Mm -hmm. Okay. She lived in the hills of Kentucky and it was normal. Mm -hmm. It was normal. It was normal, you know, in this country. I mean, we're talking about in that was in the 50s. You know, she was born in 37. So that would have been 52. Just don't bring up Jerry Lee Lewis. You know? <laughs> but it was normal in this country for women to get married at a very young age. I don't know that 15 was quote unquote normal and mass, but yeah. No, I think she was a spinster by 15 in that 19, area. No, okay. Maybe in that area, but yeah, like, but in a lot of other places, okay. Might have been a crazy. lot of other places like where Chicago, New York, Miami, LA, the rest of the country is, is country. The rest of the country is people that live in the major metropolises. Now yes. we're gonna have a geography conversation. <laughs> but in the fifties, in the fifties, mm -hmm. there wasn't this whole thing. And people where my mom lived didn't know what was going on three counties away. Mm -hmm. So whatever they were brought up on in that little pocket that they lived in mm -hmm. was normal. So you had that same normal in Kansas, you had that same normal in Arkansas, you might still have okay, it there. Lenny, you might have it. You had it all over. That it's not normal. The anymore, right and wrong, like quote Kimmy, unquote normal. The like right and not. wrong is what's skewed in this country. And yes, the whole pedophile thing is crazy. Someone that would justify or try and justify that this is a natural thing for people to have this attraction and there's nothing wrong with it is batshit crazy. Mm -hmm. Batshit crazy, but. <laughs> no, it's batshit crazy. There's no doubt about it. She got the Abby normal brain from young Frankenstein. We got it. So the point is the wrong and right in this country is skewed for every kid nowadays. Every every kid, including my kids, have a different thought of wrong and right because of what they're being fed in their in their entire I think life. There's some universal rights and wrongs. Absolutely. But but here like this being And I, I'm not, you know, I'm the last person to try and defend this person. Mm -hmm. They, them, whoever they are. I'm the last person to try and defend them. But this is the same reason I said, you know, I understand why people voted for Carrot Top. You know, it's the the <laughs> the fundamental thing is that She's been taught that no matter what sexuality you think you are, mm -hmm. 
It's normal, mm -hmm. okay? So you. when you teach someone that, no matter what sexuality, if you like fucking donkeys, it's normal. It's donkeyitis. I don't know, whatever. It's bestiality. Okay. Let's not call it bestiality there's anymore. Let's call it... There's a word for it. Yeah, let, <laughs> let's call it people who are attracted to animals, yeah. you know? Let's call it cowboys. Animal attracted know. person. An, an animal attracted animal person. Attracted you know. person, ladies and gentlemen. So when you teach people and you teach our children that you can like whatever you like. It's normal. So, it's normal. So this, whatever, prof I mean, nutty professor. People, there's not enough people that are going to jump on the nutty professor's bandwagon on this one. No, I get that. But you have to look at the deeper part of this. Okay? Well, that's your, that's your looking at it that way. And I'm coming at it from a place of, Jeez. as a person who believes in inclusivity, right? Like, I'm, I'm a person who I'm here for inclusivity i'm here for equal there's a line that you draw though right but people like, don't know what so, the line is Kimmy, no no this is a clear one for me <laughs> like and this is i think the point that i'm getting at with you is that you are usually on the other side you're like do you live your life but don't infringe on mine and don't expect me to be overly accommodating i'm on the other side of that that conversation absolutely in the sense that i will try my best to accommodate you. I will try my best to make you feel seen and to make you feel that you have, you know, representation and support, right? When it comes to, but there's yeah. a hard line in the sand and nutty professor, I'm drawing it at giving pedophiles some dignity in their fuckery. I'm like, glad, I'm, I'm glad saying. there's a line being drawn, okay? But I'm sure there's a lot of topics that don't go viral but we're finding that, a middle ground. You see, like we're finding no, absolutely. A ground. But yeah. I'm sure there's a lot of topics that don't go viral that need that line drawn at. And everybody's line is, you know, everybody. Like I said, there's no middle on this. Left, right, and yeah, different. Yeah. There's no middle on this. Everybody feels the same. You know, they should have a big. You know, they should have to wear a different color in prison so that every prisoner knows they're a pedophile, so they get beat down everywhere they I go. I just think this conversation is so. I'm sorry. Like, thinking about somebody really sitting down and penning an entire book about life as a pedophile and how we deserve dignity, too. Like, bitch, are you crazy? Like, I can understand there are probably individuals out there who, who walk through life knowing that this is wrong, right, and, and trying their hardest not to seek help, right, Reach out to the proper authorities because I I, I don't go to know confession. How, like <laughs> I don't know how that becomes you know what I mean a thing, and I'm sure that there will be scientists that will test it, and that's probably where she's going with this is that it's not a choice, it's just how you're born, and if that is the case, then obviously like get help like but. Are they really out here, like, with their picket signs? Like, we're people, too. Like, I, I don't know. I haven't seen that protest yet. You no. Can, like, have, have we seen that? But, have the but, pedophiles gotten together? I mean, listen, and, and short of this person, they, them, nutty professor, being a pedophile, what reason would she have for that? What What would drive her to, I don't know. to write something like that? I don't know. Like that's what I said. Other I, than the fact that she's a pedophile, I'm blown. Like you, so, and I'm not going to levy that on that. I'm just saying, but, but it seems like, you know, I mean, and this <laughs> again goes back to my whole thing. Everybody's picking a fight for someone else. Or did something happen? Yeah. Everyone's picking a fight for someone else that might not be the way the people they're picking the fight for necessarily feel as a whole mm -hmm. audience. You know, right back to the Indians. I yeah. mean, they, you know, the, the Native, Native Americans. Americans. Yeah, right back to the Native Americans. They they might not feel that, you know, the sitting Indian style was a, a fight they wanted to pick or changing the Redskins to the Washington whatevers. Football team, yeah. Yeah. They, they, they might not feel that that was the fight. But someone else outside of their feelings and outside no, of their influence you, you picked that, that fight. You can't spin that whole narrative, though. Like, but—, but you know, you kind of can because, no, you, you know, I, I mean, there's a 
native out there that does feel that way? Like there yes, was a, that been my a you or know, two. One. Like, but you know, people, we live in a democracy, not, so you can't say doesn't it have to be the majority? You wouldn't feel that way. That now it had nothing to do with what natives want. It had to do with what all these crazy Karens, liberal Karens wanted, and not, like that's not that's not a true representation either. I think to your point, the truth is somewhere in the middle. I think that natives, you know are possibly a little offended at certain things and like hey like the washington redskins is not a term of endearment when it comes no, to I feel the you, population but now the blackhawks or you know like the florida state seminoles we had that conversation right i don't think the seminole tribe has any problem at all with an incredible d1 program. do they have a problem with the hatchet i mean i don't know there's a because that's clearly a reference to you but know. doesn't it, doesn't one of the the person that 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 comes out on the horse every like before yeah, every home chief. game is it? Well, but are know, they whatever. a member of the tribe? I'm assuming they're a member of the tribe. Maybe I hope they're maybe member. not. If not, they should be. Florida State. I'll do anything to disparage that university. Go Karens. Sorry, <laughs> had a moment. But yeah, I mean, but I don't know. Maybe there's a Seminole All that right. would like to say. So hey. listen, we live in a democracy. Right? We live in a democracy. That's yeah. we're supposed to be living in a democracy. So how about this? How about if you want to change something that's been a standard here for hundreds of years, because we're only a hundred, couple hundred years old. Yep. Hopefully we'll make it another couple hundred years. What, do you want us to vote on it? We know how that goes. Yeah, let's vote on it. We know it. how that goes, let's, let's, buddy. <laughs> we know how that Listen, goes. Just vote on it on social media if that's what you feel. You're, that's what you feel. Listen. That's what you feel that your outlet is, and that's where you want to put your shit out there. I live in Florida. Mm -hmm. We can't. That's not our strong suit, sir. Getting the count right. I would just love to take a poll of the Native American Indians and say, <laughs> does it bother you American. that we call it sitting Indian well, style? You, know you can. Go to Man TF Up TV on Instagram in the Insta story. <laughs> Get your vote on, right? Like we can certainly It's put that, that it's that simple. You. I mean, we're all we're all clear. There's no middle on pedophiles, no. you know. But the fact I think that that to your point, Lenny, the fact is that this is even a viable conversation in 2021 in this country is a testament to a much bigger problem, and that we have empowered individuals to feel that these conversations are not only okay but are necessary and like, normal. Yeah. It's so that is absolute. That was an interesting one. And like I said, the more I read about it, the more frustrated I get. So um, don't be frustrated. It's not that it just, it's, you know, listen, like I said, how, how crazy individual. How could you feel that this was a good use of your time? Like I said, they're life. bringing attention like to their wild, but then they're emotional. But then tried to say that the reaction was predicated upon their identity their transgender identity so now they're hating now people don't like the idea of destigmatizing pedophilia not because it's just stupid and moronic but because you're a transgender individual presenting this idea get out of here well, you're just you know, an idiot that's the that's that that goes back to the whole theory that if it was a white soccer mom would it have got this much controversy if it was a white soccer mom that said it of course it would have. Yes, of course. Of course it would have. Okay, it's, it doesn't matter. That's what I'm saying. A like, white soccer mom, uh, you know, it, it doesn't matter who said this. It's wrong. Yeah. The fact, the fact that someone can feel like it's right and again, don't, is a little bit wrong, too, because, you know, like I said, it's, it's say, the empowerment. And across the board, too, just because somebody disagrees with you as a woman, I don't get to say, oh, you disagree with me because I'm a woman. no. Someone might, because you're an idiot. Do you understand? Like, no, I don't disagree Clearly. with you, Lenny, because you're, like, you don't get to use your marginalization as an excuse for why people disagree with you. Like, it's not your trump card. Being transgender does isn't your automatic, like, throwdown. Being a woman isn't your automatic throwdown. White male privilege isn't your automatic, like, you just, there's, it, it's across the board for all of us. Like, you don't get to utilize that thing about you that you want everybody to accept or to that, that 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 is your empowerment as on the flip side the thing that you're going to use oh well you just you know you're not hearing what i'm saying because i'm a woman no because maybe what's coming out of your mouth is dumb mm -hmm. that's say, why i just did you say something to me 
funny. Sorry, I just had to You're do the it. the only person laughing. <laughs> Whatever. Sometimes that's... That's funny. You know. Nestor's laughing. Could have said it at a better time. <laughs> what I was saying was profound, but whatever. Yes, anyway, it was. But, you know, I'm here for that. I'm here for that. I'm here for you, Kimmy. There you go. Perfect. See, I just needed to prove your point, dear. Yep, thanks. Anyway, <laughs> Honey. listen. So that's Lenny's rant of the day. Now I'm just going to give him something else to go on and on about. So Lenny found that on TikTok, and then I was on Twitter, and apparently somebody had levied a comment and said, you know, y'all don't believe in disciplining kids. Y'all don't respect elders anymore. I'm just out here living in hell. So that was the initial tweet, right? Well, somebody responded to that tweet by saying, we believe in disciplining kids, but we don't beat them as discipline anymore. We still respect our elders. However, we don't let them cross our boundaries or gaslight us just because they're our elders. We're unlearning toxic behaviors. Get with it. Um, and that response garnered, like, the, 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 the response tweet went viral, and there were all of these people, you know, applauding this whole, you know, we discipline, we just discipline different, and, you know, we can respect our elders, but that doesn't mean that we're going to let them just get away with saying anything crazy and whatever, whatever. And I just, I found myself getting a little bit frustrated. Obviously, I'm not a parent, so I can't really speak to discipline, but because of my career and covering youth football, like, I've worked around a lot of children. I've done a lot of, you know, outreach work and things like that. And, you know, I will say this, as many incredible kids as I've come in contact with, and I have a lot of faith in the future, I've also seen a lot of disrespectful ass little kids. You know what I mean? Kids that drop F-bombs whenever and however. And you know, I'm a swear. But when I was eight or nine, I would have never thought to curse in front of older people so for all of that we discipline we just discipline differently it's kind of like well your lack of traditional discipline is leading to a generation of really disrespectful kids yes it is and it, it's funny i looked i had some videos the other day of my kids when they were younger and miranda um was like the cursing police <laughs> she really she was the cursing police she and you could ask my friend the the boat guy we called yep. every time he would come over she's like you owe me a quarter you owe me a quarter because he dropped f bombs yeah. everywhere she had a curse jar everybody would have to do it and you know we never allowed it in our house never allowed the kids to curse in our house um until i think they were probably you know right now in their in their in their young late middle school, early high school, because it's everywhere. I was going to say, would you have done that when you were I 11 mean, or 12? I was a pretty rebellious little prick. Uh-huh. Okay, I was, yeah. I was a bad kid. I had one mom in the neighborhood, my oldest friends. We've been friends for almost 50 years now. I lived at their house. You know, I told you my parents were divorced. I lived with my mom. She would be working, whatever. I would always be at my friend's mm-hmm. house. And his mom would yell at me every time. From, like, across the house. I would be in my friend's bedroom. We would be doing something. I'd be like, she fuck. Mom she'd buy, like, she'd be, stop swearing. You know? And it's, like, ingrained in my head. So, you know, I could have a normal conversation. It's funny. This... My employees at the pharmacy listen to the podcast, and they're like, I never heard you swear. She's like, how do you swear so much? I'm like, you know, it's it's context. So clearly you can have it somewhere. So, you know, when my daughter lovingly puts up her middle finger, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's a gesture that I have with my daughter. It's mm-hmm. not – I don't take it as a fuck you, mm-hmm. you know, if – it's context. It's context. And I've accepted the fact that they're going to swear and they're going to be and I, I let them have a little leeway in my house with it because of that. I don't think they should ever any kid should ever say fuck you to an adult in a way that they're telling them to fuck off. Yeah. That that's just clearly I mean, I tell my wife, if Joey says something like that to you, whoosh, mm-hmm. right across the face. Not hard. Not hard. Mm-hmm. Just enough to let them know you're there. 
Well, that goes back to the and that's inappropriate to the disciplining thing. But like my mom, because I read her that tweet, and she, you know, she always jokes because I'm I curse like a sailor, and I curse in front of my mother. But I'm grown, like I'm grown, and I've been grown for a while. And so yes, I swear in front of my mother. And there, I still have friends that are even you know that are my age or older that are like, I cannot believe you curse in front of your mom. And my mother will tell you, my grandmother, God rest her soul, passed a few years ago, but. My mother, I don't think, swore in front of my grandmother until she was 60. Do you know what I mean? Like, it was, she's like, I don't remember. How about I don't think my mom ever swore in her life? Yeah, no, I don't, I (laughs) never heard my, like, my grandmother, like, I never heard, you know, Mm -hmm. get the hell out of here was probably the extent to which she was going to drop any sort of curse word, right? Um, But it's just one of those things where it makes me sad because I'm still the person that if I swear in front of somebody else's child, I, I do the, like, I'm so... Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you catch yourself or like I've been out at the pool at my building before and there have been young children there and you overhear these 20 somethings just cursing left and right. And I'm like, have a little class. Like, and I get that this is a public space, but you don't need to be loud and drunk and obnoxious when Mm -hmm. there's four year olds in the pool, you know, and the parents, God bless them. Don't say anything. But and I've almost been tempted a time or two to get up and go say something to the people. Oh, I've said something to people before. Did she? I have. I have. I'm not afraid. And I, you know, our, our Friday night dinners, you know, it's mm-hmm. four or five, six guys sitting at a table bullshitting about whatever. You know, if there's a family sitting next door. We're aware. Yeah. We're like, aware of our yeah. surroundings. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. we're not going to swear in front of a five year old. But I don't think that these, and I guess my point is this generation of kids that are being quote unquote disciplined differently, I don't think are going to be aware. I don't think they have any problems. Like I said, I've seen it at the pool at my building when you've got four and five year olds having a birthday party and you can hear the conversation and it's, "Ah, you know, fuck this. And I'm just like, you're an ass. Like, just have a little bit of respect for other people's children. Like, and so to me, that's kind of a testament to when we talk about this different type of discipline or these different relationships that people are having. Because, Lenny, you would have died if you'd seen the comments on this Twitter feed. It was talking about, you know, because there's also somebody else pointed out, like, listen, folks, there's a difference between discipline and abuse. Absolutely. Right? Like, you can be physical with a child and you're not, nobody's telling you to square up and punch him in the face and knock him out. Listen, I'm 54 years old. So 42 years ago, I got paddled by my principal in school several times, mm-hmm. I might add. But did you go to a, did you go to a like, public a, okay, school, public school. Okay. public school. Wow. OK. Public yeah. school in Dade County. So, you know, this is not like some backwoods, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. mom's going out to the bush to get a switch and beat mm-hmm. your ass with it. This is this was normal. This was normal. And you know how many kids got paddled in my school? Very few because <laughs> you were just next level bad because no, because. Just like we have a healthy, the kids have a healthy fear of their own shadow today. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Kids back then had a fear of, you know, getting paddled. Yeah. Okay. Now my kids don't have a fear of getting paddled, although they do realize that dad will spank them if necessary. And did when they were little, lovingly, never out of anger, you know, made them walk over and bend themselves over my knee to get their spanking. You know, they had to take it. Yeah. You know, and just the whole thought of that, it's not just the, the actual touch mm-hmm. that that gets them, but the whole thought of it's being very, reprimanded. Yeah, it's, it's all yes, of it. it's necessary. And, you know, my kids, even though I haven't spanked them in probably eight years. Yeah, yeah, eight years, <laughs> nine years, they have a healthy fear of it. But would that have come from, and I guess the question is, so, like, I think I was spanked once in my life. Like, my mother was not a physical physical disciplinarian, right? And I was great with everybody else but my mom. Like, I was that person. Like, people like, oh, my God, she's so good. And she'd be like, wait till she's alone with me. Like, I was terrible with my mother and incredible with everybody. So, I guess that's a blessing as a parent, right? You hope when you give your kids to to other people, they behave themselves. And I always did that. But I would pitch a fit. I was an only child. I am an only child on my mom's side. Like, so, I was just that ass like I was that person I remember one time I was at Disney with my stepdad and my mom and I was having a meltdown about God only knows what and my stepdad from the Midwest army kid was in the Navy all of these things and he wasn't a loud guy he wasn't a yeller but he was like he had warned me a couple times and he ended up he just grabbed me we were like on Main Street USA 
and just pop. Just and of course, <laughs> I had the. But do you think he ever had to spank me again? No, and it wasn't painful. It was the embarrassment of being spanked on Main Street, USA. You yes. know what I mean? And his whole deal was stop disrespecting your mother. He, I don't even think mm -hmm. that he was mad about himself, you know, or I wasn't being bad. She was just like, mm -hmm. she said no. No is no. Like, you're here at Disney World. Like, get over yourself, little yes. girl. But there is a line. There is a line. And my my 13-year-old boy is pushing that line with his mother mm. and i told her and i'm like i can't this is not for me to intervene mm -hmm. okay this is how he is talking to you and that's you know and if he talks to me that way i'm he gonna doesn't. wake him up he doesn't I, I don't really have that interaction with him to get those i was gonna say she's mothering do you want to hear what i do when he's being an ass yeah. in his room cursing mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. i walk out into the the garage mm -hmm. and I open the circuit breaker panel and I turn his room off <laughs> right when he's in the middle of a game no Wi-Fi, and he loses his shit over it. But you know what? When I speak again, mm -hmm. he listens yep. <laughs> and I told her it's number 19. Just go out there and turn it off. It That's her choice. Yep. So, you know, it's it. People let that go. Now, mind you, my kids are exactly what you are. Mm -hmm. They're absolutely respectful to any yep. person outside of my household. Yep. Absolutely. You've met them. Yeah, no, 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 for sure. You know, my son goes out of his way to greet people and mm -hmm. thank them and shake their hand. And it's just that's the way they are. That's the way they're brought up. And that's the way it is. You know, you have leeway in your house because these are the people who love you and you're comfortable yeah. with and you can get away with anything. Yeah. But. Step out of line, you're going to get popped. I just think that it's very, like, and I'm also breaking, you know, because they're talking about, like, we're breaking, you know, generational curses. We're breaking toxic behavior. But it's, like, where you're getting rid of maybe some toxic traits, are you creating? They're other? burning down the house, Kimmy. Okay. They're burning down the house. That's what I'm saying. But, but back to your point from the earlier conversation. Why don't kids get paddled in school anymore? I mean, but but that that's a testament to even I can remember being a kid in like elementary school in particular. And if people again, I was I'm an eye roller. Lenny, you've been around me long enough now. I'm an eye roller. It has gotten me into shit. I'm a sire. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm I'm that person. I'm, I'm a smart ass. Like, I'm a lot of things. But when it came to people of authority, I always had respect. And I used to get so frustrated with my friends that would like mouth off to our teachers when they were clearly in the wrong not the teacher but as you know you didn't do your homework a teacher says you didn't do your homework i'm gonna you know you need to take i'm not taking that home I'm gonna, da, 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 like whatever and i used to get upset and now fast forward you know 30 years and teachers would beg to be disrespected in that way because now not only are they being disrespected by the children that they teach, but they're being disrespected by their parents, and the parents are encouraging the kids to disrespect the teacher. You don't speak to my child like that. Like, there was nothing worse when I was growing up than a teacher threatening to call your mother. What? Mm -hmm. If my mother has to come down here, or my uncle even worse, oh, hell no. Like, that mm -hmm. was the worst thing. If I have to come out of work to come get you at school over a behavioral issue or some other, like. You got problems. It's about to go. You will. And what, what was the thing that your parent would say? Like, I hope to not see you again. Like principals and teachers were always good with the whole. I hope, you know, as much yeah. as I appreciate seeing you, I hope to never see you again. Oh, your parent. You won't. <laughs> you won't ever have to see me again. Mm -hmm. And that was basically you knew as a kid. Grab you by the say, ear yeah. and drag you right out of the school. Nope. And nobody's saying shit. Nope. <laughs> nobody's saying shit. I'm dragging her by the hair to her car. It, it's going away. You know, you know, the whole living vicariously through your kid thing that mm -hmm. that people tend to say with with parents who put their kid in sports yeah. and whatever this is the same thing okay i grew up on the sticks and stones yep. thing you know sticks in case anybody doesn't know because i think it got sticks canceled stones can break my own but words will <laughs> never hurt, hurt me so know, your glue whatever you say bounces off <laughs> and it sticks to you <laughs> She knows the whole thing. Anymore. She probably got a secret handshake. Did they too. not say that anymore? We should bring that. No, back. that was canceled apparently, because that that was canceled because now words are much more powerful than a baseball bat. So, this whole you know 
living vicariously through your kids has become people who didn't like the way necessarily their teacher spoke to them in fifth grade are now parents. And, you know, you're not ever going to speak to my kid like that. That teacher made me feel bad. Yeah, the teacher made you feel bad because you didn't do your fucking homework. Yeah. If you did your fucking homework, the teacher wouldn't have made you feel bad. So now those people who felt bad in fifth grade are bringing back these memories and instowing them on, I don't ever want that to happen to my kid. And I, you know how I'm not going to have that happen to my kid? I'm going to stop teachers from disciplining our kids. No, no kid can get disciplined by their adult teacher anymore. No. Nope. And, and to your point, I will agree. Like, I do believe that words are extremely powerful, and I think they're extremely powerful even when you're talking about adults, never mind children, like men in particular. You can act like you guys don't pay attention, you don't hear shit, y'all hear everything, and especially the negative stuff, especially when it's in a partnership, but that's not what we're talking about right now. But no, I Did do you say something, Kimmy? I do believe <laughs> that words are powerful, so I'm here for curbing how people speak. Like, no, your teacher shouldn't call somebody the F word or a derogatory term or you're stupid. Or whatever, but there's nothing wrong with somebody telling you. I expect more from you. Yes. Right? Like in terms of like, and I can remember respect like that. Respect goes both ways. Respect goes yeah. both ways. You should, you should respect the young adults that are growing up in this world, okay? And you should realize that whatever you do in fifth grade is leaving an impression on them that's mm -hmm. going to last forever because yeah. they don't have too much other to reference as yeah. in fifth grade. Well, not yet. They you know, spend a lot of time with their teachers. They're, mean, you they're, they're not there yet. You know, they just don't. They don't have that much to think about in fifth yeah. grade. They're not worried about the bills or yeah. the groceries or cooking dinner. They're worried about my schoolwork. That's all I have to do. Mm -hmm. So, yes, they need to be taken into consideration. But you cannot stop the teachers from making your kids sit in the corner or making your kid yeah. write a thousand times, I will do my homework, I will do my homework, yeah. I will do my – you can't stop that. We're raising a generation well, of kids. No accountability. No accountability, no respect, and no realistic. Well, a repercussion. No realistic thoughts of how the world really is. Mm -hmm. Facts. Because, you know, I understand that, you know, it might bother you if I say some words that are, might not be inappropriate or you, you don't like them. Okay, but don't say but, it like But that. it's true. It you a pussy it's if you don't like negative words. It's, or negative I'm just saying this is where our kids are going. Okay? I see it with my kids, and I try and curb it. I see it with my daughter more than my sons, but I try and curb it. I'm like, look, the reality of the world is not this little envelope that you're sitting in, okay? But you realize that there are parents on the flip side that are the exact op like same generation as you. Led, of course. And they have a completely different take on this. Like, don't you speak to my child? Like, da, da 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 Or they're dropping their kids off unpotty trained and expecting teachers to do the the literal dirty. No, work. listen. I like, I've told you from the beginning that the the whole uh, our our issues with our kids start with the parents. That goes without saying, but. You now have the parents that might be ir irresponsible, might not be doing the right thing. And then on top of that, you're stopping the education system yeah. from doing its job, which is really to raise our kids. Well, and then you have kids that are a distraction in a classroom and they can't be disciplined. And now they're actually negatively impacting the other kids who are coming to learn. Yes. So obviously this is a conversation. It's perpetual. 100% that we could expand on but the other thing that i thought about when it came to discipline like i don't think my grandfather or my grandmother on my mom's side at least like i know my dad had a different situation and upbringing um but like for my mom's parents we're not physical again we're not physical disciplinarians right and these are the children of immigrants like my grandmother was the youngest of 10 greek kids and I don't know if it was just she was so far removed from the rest of them. You know, her oldest brother was serving in World War II, and she was, you know, chilling at USO dances. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they were, and she went to wear red shoes one time, and he called her a whore because he had been in Egypt, and only whores wore red shoes. And, like, her Greek-speaking mother was like, mm -hmm. Christopher, like, you can't say, like, don't say that to your sister. She's just going to a dance. But I don't think that her immigrant parents— Did she change her shoes? Probably. Probably. Probably because he didn't because he didn't approve. Like she was yeah. That's the way it was. Um, yeah. 
But I don't think her parents, like my yaya and my papu, were not physical disciplinarians, but there was just respect there. So I feel like if you're teaching your children respect, you don't necessarily have to put hands on. So I guess the question is, they act like this, they, they act like every child in America up until 1980 or whatever was physically abused by their parents. And my point is, no, they weren't, dis- but they were disciplined yeah. in whatever way that looked. And disciplining, yelling, punishing your child is not abuse. No. Listen, like I said, I was a very bad kid. I can remember the two times I got my ass beat by my parents. My mom beat me one time with a belt, mm-hmm. and my dad kicked my fucking, drug me out of a shower and kicked my ass one time. Because I'm like, I'm not doing that. I was about, I was probably 12 or 13 years old with my dad. And I'd say I'd probably probably around the same time with with my mom, mm-hmm. you know, just you would never physically though the extent to you, that would never your dad when you would never handle your children like that, would you? No, no, but it's um, my oldest. You know, he turned eighteen. Mm-hmm. He decided he was going to flex. I'm like, all right, that's when he's an adult. <laughs> that's I'm a whole like, grown ass. I'm like, all right, you're going to flex. Bring it, but don't be mad when I whip your ass. Mm-hmm. It's just that simple. I'm here for it. You know, I mean, would I, would I, I wouldn't ever beat my kids. Mm -hmm. Okay. If my 13 year old who's, you know, an athlete and tough gets enraged and comes at me, I'm going to pin him down. I'm going to make him, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to make him understand what one finger can do to you. Mm -hmm. Physically, yeah. you know, they, they, they're just, you're, they're young. Well, they don't exactly understand. Though, but again, you're also teaching a life lesson there. Like, yeah, you know, don't bring it unless you can take it. Like, it's, it's, that it's that simple. It's that simple. So, in- you know, am I going after him to pound him for something? No. But, you know, I will give him a smack if he's yeah. out of line. Well, I also think, too, when you think about the situations where abuse exists, a lot of times there's other dynamics at play Of course. There. Like, you have... Alcohol. Alcohol. Yes. <laughs> or you're dealing with a mental health issue that's mm-hmm. not being addressed, especially when you're going back a generation or two. So I guess my point to that tweet is let's have the real conversation. Let's not act like, you know, Everybody's a generation ago we were out here just beating children left and right and that discipline is a be- – like because that's not the narrative. So to your point, Lenny, right, even – again, it's like that's – somewhere along the line we took – a couple instances, we took instances of extremism and turned it into a narrative that was discipline equals abuse. Here's one step farther, okay? It's not even the, because you brought this up one time, the the abuse for not eating your dinner. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh but here, here's to my point. Everything is now abuse. Oh, yeah. So if you take your kid's video game away for six hours. Deprivation. And yeah, you're like abusing them. You're emotionally abusing them. And yeah. I bought it. <laughs> you got that right. I bought it. I can break it if I want to. Would you like I'll to? I'll throw it in the fucking garbage. I've actually thrown my kid's stuff out the window of the car when they're having tantrums. My daughter, ask my daughter. She'll never forget it. Right out, right out, right out the window. Boom. <laughs> Bye. That's wild. <laughs> you know, it's but uh, how else are our kids going to learn that there's consequences in life? Yeah. Do I want them to learn that there's consequences after they, you know, are out in the front yard shooting the gun into the lawn or, you know, after, you know, doing crazy shit? No, I don't want them to learn that. I want them to learn now. I want them to learn when they're young that there's consequences and they only get worse mm-hmm. depending on how bad you are. So, you know, let's. Say you're having a tantrum in the car over some little bullshit thing, you know, a Disney cup or a, you want your whatever, psh, out the window it goes. It's gone now. Yep. It's over. Now what are you going to cry about? Mm-hmm. It. These are consequences, you know, and it, it, our kids don't have them these days. They have no respect. My friend um, was out on Halloween with his daughter, and he's a – God, he's a rah, rah, He's – He's <laughs> he's a tightly wound. If he's a tight. Him a rah, rah, <laughs> I can only imagine. He is a tightly wound rubber band. Okay, and he's got, 
you know, fourteen year old daughter, thirteen year old daughter who's out on Halloween. He's got a hundred pound, hundred and twenty pound Rhodesian Ridgeback that's walking with them, and you know, it's a well trained dog and everything. And this kid is standing there with a skateboard, teenage kid standing there with a skateboard, pounding the skateboard on the ground, just going ta 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 ta, and the dog is getting agitated, mm -hmm. right? It's just aggravating the dog. So he asks him nicely, "Hey man, can you stop tapping the skateboard? Tapping the skateboard? It's bothering my dog." What does the kid come out with? I don't have to stop. This is a free country. Well, now my 50-year-old friend says, I'm going to shove that skateboard down your throat if you don't stop. I'm going to call the police. I'm going to. He's like, you call. You want me to call them for you? <laughs> I don't care. You're going to get a beaten if you don't stop aggravating my dog. And, you know, I just, I don't, I don't understand that. As, you know, kids nowadays all have that. There was always kids like that. Yeah. There was always kids yes. with disrespect. Always. But now, but now when you have that situation, it's not the, you know. It's no not consequences. The, it's not the one bad apple syndrome. That's that this kid has parents that would come out and be like, don't talk to my kid like that. You have, as opposed to going, knock it off. Yeah. And ask you politely to stop banging. Like, do you exactly. want that dog to come you? Exactly. Exactly. So again, it goes back to that parenting thing, and it it makes me sad sometimes to think like, did your parents really get it that wrong? Like, were you that? Listen, there, there's still people out there that are that are doing the right thing. We had, I don't know, Nick was about twelve years old, mm -hmm. thirteen years old. We had a basketball hoop on the street for all the kids. There was fourteen kids that lived in the neighborhood, fourteen boys that lived in the neighborhood. It's a basketball hoop. Come out one day, it's gone. Like, what the fuck? So one of the neighbors goes riding around in the neighborhood across the street, mm -hmm. sees the basketball hoop, goes up. Hey, you know, that's our basketball hoop. Came from over here. Now, this is a nice black family, mm -hmm. lived across the street. The dad comes out, grabs the kid, says, go in the backyard and get that fucking hoop and walk it back to where you stole it from. Okay? Now, mind you, this is about three-quarters of a mile. OK, because mm -hmm. he had to walk down one street, down another, down another. He walks the hoop back. The dad mm -hmm. is there waiting for him. He brings the hoop back. The dad says, now take the hoop back to our house and bring it back again. And made the kid walk it back and walk it back again. Now, that to me was, you know, hey, this guy's doing the right thing, you know. But clearly it's abuse, right? Clearly, gonna somebody's going to see it as abuse. No, no, it's respect. He's teaching his son mm -hmm. that you don't do this. He's teaching his son that you don't do this. And everything isn't, I don't want to say everything isn't about a con because now after you've done this, you can go back to the house and go, do you understand why I made you do that? You can have the conversation. But that was what the, that Twitter interaction was all about well now we talk and we engage their critical thinking and blah 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 blah. and it's like that's great but they're if you kids don't learn they don't have that <laughs> if you don't learn accountability if you don't learn that like you said there are repercussions to your actions then all of that talking is a moot point so like parents you're doing your kids a disservice like i hate to say it, and when yeah. this isn't that the man that got podcast is out here advocating to whip your children that is couldn't be farther from the truth but it's okay to discipline in a variety of ways like a little yeah. manual labor right like when these kids were running around doing that TikTok challenge where it was destroying school property did you mm -hmm. hear about that and yeah, it yeah. happened right here in good old south florida and you know i Everything was on at the time and we opened up the airwaves, and these parents were savage. They were like, arrest them. Like, I don't want it on their record, but go through all the bells and whistles. Cuff them, take them to jail, have them sit in that cell. They need to get a taste of their own, you know, yeah. medicine. They need to learn that there's consequences and repercussions to bad decisions. People today, kids especially today, thinks that they think that they're going to videotape whatever's happening mm -hmm. and then it's going to become okay. This is why I did it. And it it's not the narrative. The kids today need to respect the things that that the people that 
are trying to teach them. And the parents today need to understand that, you know, maturity Mm -hmm. is a real thing. It's a real word and it means something. Mm -hmm. And your kids are not mature enough to understand the consequences of doing something wrong when they're four years old. Mm -hmm. They learn by what you teach them. So if they have no consequences at four and six and 10 and 15, when they're adults and you're no longer around to protect them, because that's what you're going to need to do for some of these kids is protect them because they're not going to know what hit them when they go out in the real world that, that they need to be taught, Mm -hmm. you know, sit them in the corner, take their, whatever video games away, take their phone away, give them consequences. Start now. And we might save the next generation. We might. But they need it. And also, and teach them how to use their words. I mean, like if something's bothering them, instead of them, if your child is continuously acting out, there's something going on there. Engage them in conversation. You have to discipline, but you have to teach you Again, repercussions. Now sit down and let's talk. Why did you throw your video game, you know, remote at the television? <laughs> why? Did, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like first you're going to get a penalty, but then let's talk about why this behavior is happening there. You can't just every time somebody's having an emotional meltdown when they're, you know, a child and hormonal, just go, oh, my God. And I don't know. Like, and that's no coddling to be what it's all about. No coddling. What, when you're like you said, when you're. On a football field. I can or- tell you right now, if you have a teenage boy and he's acting out, get him more hand lotion. Oh, my God. It'll calm him right down. Right down. I'm just saying. Here, buddy. You know, the fuck. Women are a little more difficult. Hey. Girls are a little more difficult. Throw in the box. <laughs> you guys don't. I'm, actually, we're. Re- guys are pretty simple. We are really not, but you would just prefer that's not the route you want to take with your daughter. <laughs> no, probably not. So, probably not. I mean, would probably work. On that um, note, I think parents, y'all need to man the fuck up too and yes. take responsibility for being parents. Yes. Right. You need to wear your parent shoes. You need to put on your parent pants and you need to understand that you are molding and creating human beings and future adults. What they're learning, they're learning from you. Yes. And you know what? Parents need to use those critical thinking skills. There you go. And before you jump to the conclusion that your kid is always right, Mm. you need to see all sides of what happened because I don't know. I've met a lot of little fucking pricks out there that I'd like to throw right out the window of my fucking car. I was about to say, as a parent, (laughs) do you allow other people to, I don't want to say discipline your children, but if they're close friends of your family, like if your kids were at Kevin's house. I don't give a shit if I even know the parent. If my kid opens his mouth out of line, straighten him out. Straighten him out. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. I mean, I've I've had kids, you know, driving carpool, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, no phones in the car. Turn your phones off. Look out the fucking windows. That's the real world. <laughs> Look out the windows. Put your phones down. I don't want your phones in my Has car. Has a parent ever confronted you about handling their children like that? No, they seem to be afraid of me. I don't know why, but I don't. It's just no. I've never, I've never had that. But like, you know, we have friends that you know the kids are like addicted to the phones, and I'm like, they're like, I don't know what to do. Take his fucking phone away. Mm-hmm. It could be the fact that the parents are plying them with absolutely, the Absol- absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Conversation with their children because that's Lenny. Stop letting Instagram raise your kids, or yeah, or your <laughs> iPad, or any anything, of it, any of it other than parents. In fact, when you take your kids out to eat, I challenge any parents watching the Man the Fuck Up podcast or listening to leave all electronic devices, like you said, <laughs> in the car and actually sit at dinner and have a real conversation. With your kids. Even if you don't talk to each other, it's going to be better. <laughs> even if even if it's just a blank stare, it's better than their phones. You know, let them see the people in the restaurant, the interactions between people and and She's literally now all the waiter or waitresses. Yeah. You know, I mean, it is what it is. I try and take my kids out to dinner and, you know, teach them that, you know, the, the, everybody's here. It's, you know, I know a lot of people that might look down on wait staff or stuff like that. And it's just not, it's not, everybody's a person. 
everybody is a person and listen, this is me. I, you know, I might come from the fact that we owned a bar at one point and had the hospitality type of staff, but I, you know, even bad waiters could just be having a bad day. Mm -hmm. They could just be having a bad day. So I give them, you know, do you tell them to get your food though? Remember, we've had that conversation. Oh, uh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, facts. And I also think that conversation skills are so important. And we've gotten so far removed from that. When I was younger, I went I, to dinner. I, I like to be a part of adult conversations, whether that's right or in some people's minds, you know, that's not okay. Again, I was an only child, and my mom took me almost everywhere. I didn't necessarily put my opinion in on the adult conversation, but I certainly liked to listen, and I never wanted to sit at the kids' table. I hated the kids' table, but whatever. Um, but that those conversation skills that I learned from a young age because people engaged me in conversation, age-appropriate conversation, but engaged me in conversation, mm -hmm. got me to where I am. Like, I'm comfortable in any situation. It's, you know, reading and being able to speak are two of the most invaluable gifts you can give your children, and they're free, right? Like, yes. pick up a book and learn how to communicate with people. And you will take away so many insecurities because being able to communicate in uncomfortable situations yes. is a blessing. I deliberately put my daughter in uncomfortable situations. That does not surprise me, Lenny. It doesn't surprise me. How are you going to learn? You're making her better. You're how are you going to learn? Better. So that is a challenge. That is a man the fuck up challenge to parents. Yeah. Engage your children in conversation. Leave the phones in the car. So you don't have to beat them, but you have to discipline them. And you have to be on the side of right and wrong, not on the side of your child. It's not always going to be. You know, a kid inherently, when they think they're going to do something or get in trouble with their parents, they're going to default mm -hmm. to not telling the truth, okay? They're a child. A lot of adults do that, too. Yes, they're a <laughs> child. So, yes, children definitely. Yes, well, that's a learned thing, you yeah. know? It's 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 a learned thing. So they're going to default to that. So at least get the whole story before you get all rah-rah, my kid would never do that. Mm -hmm. Or my kid didn't say that. Or my kid this. Or my kid that. Do you think, and we're going to wrap, but do you think that part of that, though, that instant defense mechanism that I can't really rap. I'm white. <laughs> don't be informal that was one of your dad jokes I'm sorry was. you set dad it up joke numero uno uh, man the fuck up podcast wait 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 we need to I can't really rap that's for me <laughs> speak for yourself Eminem would have a very different take on this um, but do you think that that's a defense mechanism from parents because they take their children doing something wrong as a reflection of their parenting skills so then they go into this like if my kid was wrong, then that makes me a bad parent. So I'm going to defend my child because that way I don't have to take fault for him being a shithead or her being a. I, you know, I think that could be part of it. But I also yeah. think that, you know, people automatically think that everyone else is wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like it's the whole don't discipline my kids. You know, like I said, you can't get spanked in school anymore. You can't get tr you can't get in trouble in school anymore. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous that we're taking people who spend eight hours a day with our children. Mm -hmm. and More than a lot of parents. Yes. More than a lot of parents. I mean, what do you see your kid an hour in the morning? Mm -hmm. You pick them up. You have dinner with them. You put them to bed. If they have any after school activities, mm -hmm. you see them from six to nine. And half the time they're in their room anyway because they've got a TV in there. They've got their video games. So the now the people on. that they're spending their whole entire day with can't reprimand them in any way shape or form because their feelings when might get hurt when did that switch happen though because there used to be a respect for educators it was like when i'm not around like when you're at school your teacher is me you respect them the way you respect me like that was something that was taught to you like or if you were going to a friend's house listen to me while you're at their house their parents are me whoever's in charge there is me like it's all those little bitches that are trying to change the toxic way they were brought up okay <laughs> i'm sorry like your that. mommy and daddy spanked you i was like i need to i'm sorry <laughs> i want to i want to gauge for myself how toxic your upbringing 
really was. Yeah. Again, if you were in an Sorry, abusive, fluffy. abusive <laughs> household, that's very different. Yes. So don't, what is that, project that onto everybody else, you know, because. Yeah, get help. Break the cycle. Yeah. Break the cycle. If your dad got drunk and beat the shit out of you, <laughs> yeah. I get it. Yeah. You were abused, mm-hmm. okay? If your dad got mad at you and spanked your ass because you were doing something wrong, that's not abuse, okay? So break the cycle. You want to have kids that are respectful and grow up in a society and are able to handle it when you're not around to protect them? You're going to have to discipline them in some way, shape, or form. And the irony of it is they probably did an okay job with you, even if they did spank you a little bit. If you're sitting here as an adult, Using your critical thinking. You understand what I'm saying? Because most people who oftentimes were abused turn out to be abusers. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, listen, it's, you know, and most women marry their dad or or the opposite. You know, it's it's a cycle. That's what I'm saying. So the people who are out here that are progressively disciplining or whatever, probably. Yeah. Childhood probably wasn't too bad for you. No. And listen, I I got my ass got to this I got my ass beat when I was a kid. I got bullied. I got pushed around. Not you by know? your parents. This is not by my right parents. By kids, kids in the neighborhood. Yeah. It's it's called life. Mm-hmm. You know, it kind of bullies you. It's the way it is. It bullies you and it pushes you in a direction. No, yes, we don't like bullies though. No, and you but I I eventually bullied, bullied the bullies. The bully. Yep. So you know, if if it's gonna you know it, it, you stand up. Mm-hmm. You either stand up or you cower. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's it's I, I believe that kids need to man be taught to, to man, man the fuck up. up. OK, and it's a very good place to wrap this conversation because now we're about to walk into bullying and everything else. Uh, so, again, thank you for checking out the Man the Fuck Up podcast. You can follow us on Apple, Google, Spotify, Butter Squash. What's it called? <laughs> BuzzFeed, Buzzsprout. BuzzFeed, Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout. Uh, we also have a YouTube channel. We're on Instagram, at ManTFUpTV, and TikTok. Same thing, at ManTFUpTV. And don't TV. forget to email Kimmy B <laughs> at ManTFUpTV.com. Did we say something? I can't that- believe we haven't gotten emails in Kimmy's email yet. Did we say something that offended you? Let us know. Is there something that you would like to say to offend others? Let us know. Uh, if you have a great suggestion for a guest, you can leave it in the comments. Um, any thoughts, feelings, whatever. If you just totally disagree with Kimmy, put it in her email. Sure. I, I, you're obsessed <laughs> with the emails. I'm like, and I'm going to I just want to see one. I, I want to see one come in. I like to see the comments, too. Okay, but comments. Yeah, sure. I'm you good with comments. Com- that's old good. school. You know, it's that old school thing. Well, I can, I can, re- I can that dinosaur thing. my email. It doesn't make you happy. But anyway, it's the Man the Fuck Up podcast on Man the Fuck Up TV. Peace out. 